Uh, again, we want to welcome everyone to our MINA education session on the new PubMed, which we're very excited about. Initially, we were angsty because PubMed, it is a tremendous amount of work for us. <laughs> but the transition, all things considered, I think has been okay. I am Orby Dingwall. I'm Christine Nielsen. And we are your MyNet librarians and your hosts for today. So we will get started. Uh, the first thing we want to do is just review about GoToWebinar. If you need to, everyone's line is muted. And if you need to communicate with us, you can access the questions box. It might say questions, it might say and to do that, you can um, find that bottom of your screen. Um, and then you might need to click on this sideways orange and white arrow. Uh, and then you can view the full menu. Once you've got that menu box open, uh, there's the questions panel. And you can drop that down. And then you can chat with us about any questions that you might have. We're going to launch a poll just to really get familiar with everything that we've got available to us and to hopefully um, make things a wee bit interactive. So I've launched the poll and then you can let us know if you were able to locate that questions box. So we'll give you a few moments to answer that. So far it's looking pretty good. We also want to give a particular welcome to the other uh, librarians and health sciences librarians that are joining us today. As we mentioned, it's really uh, nerve wracking every time PubMed has changed and everyone is for how to be letting everyone know about the new features. Okay, so most people have voted. I'm gonna close that. Thanks for doing that. I'll just go back and just show this uh, slide one more time, just to show that if you need to chat with us, just pop your questions into this chat box here. Okay. So our objectives for today are to review the um, core services available to you through MyNet, to recognize the features and the new interface in PubMed. So if you're new to PubMed, uh, this session is for you. If you're familiar with PubMed and a new interface looks like, this session is for you too. We're going to create some searches in PubMed, and then we're going to make sure that you know how to request articles uh, from MyNet, uh, articles that you found in PubMed, and then order them through MyNet. Okay, so what is MyNet? MyNet is Manitoba's Health Information and Knowledge and it's a service provided from the University of Manitoba's Health Sciences Libraries to staff of Manitoba Health, fee-for-service physicians in Manitoba, and staff of the participating regional health authorities. So we're glad that you're connected with us, and we're happy to connect with others who might not know about us. This is our team, our amazing team. We've got two full-time librarians, that's Christine and I, and utilize Gail Matheson who also helps us out and Cheryl is our amazing library assistant that often is um, the first one to get all of your emails or requests and uh, we are part of a bigger team that's an outreach team and there's an additional three librarians and three technicians um, who primarily serve the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority but we, um, all, we all work together. So if you don't have a library card yet, please consider applying for or filling out the registration to get one. Um, our webinars are free and open to anyone, but uh, it's great to have the library card if ever you need full text articles, or if you want to access it um, from home or uh, from different places, then you need to have that library card. And if you've your website bookmarked, 
Um, not that long ago, we uh, updated our website. It looks very much the same, but it does have a new address. So um, make sure that you've just got all your bookmarks updated. And the services that we offer. Anytime you need information, you can pop us a message and say, hey, can you do a search for me? And we will send you a list of those results. You can request full text articles from us. So whether you learned about those articles um, through one of the searches we did for you or a search you did yourself, or if you just were reading um, in the news and you heard about some new article, send us a message and say, hey, I need the full text of this. And particularly anytime you're searching on your own and you come across that paywall that says, pay us $85 to access this full text, don't ever do that. Just send us a message and say, hey, I need this article and we will send it to you. We, um, if you ever want to keep up to date on a certain topic or from a certain journal, then again, we'll create a weekly alert for you. And, um, and it's just on all new articles that are new and available uh, and that are custom to your area or your interest. And we offer education sessions. Uh, we also do um, training. So if your team wanted some specific instruction or um, just an orientation to your team, when it's safe to do so, we're happy to come in person and uh, we are always available virtually. And finally, um, everyone who has a MyNet library card has access to the online tool up to date, which is a really amazing tool. Um, for clinical, uh, for all of your clinical needs. So now we, that's the introduction. Now we are into PubMed and I'm going to launch our second poll, which is to ask you what your level of experience using PubMed is. So whether you use it all the time or whether you've like, heard about it, but don't really know about it, we just want to get a sense of, um, of your familiarity. So all over the map today. All over the map today. Yeah, a few who are completely new. We know it's those librarians who use PubMed all the time. Um, and then a couple of you that are using it once in a while. Okay, I'll close that. Thanks everybody for letting us know about that. So what is PubMed? PubMed is a, oh, and I'll just say, if you wonder why I'm looking like this, I do have two monitors, but my video is here. So I'm trying to look here, but if you see me looking away, I'm just looking over at my other monitor. Um, so it's a search engine that's provided by the National Library of Medicine in the United States, and it's free, which is amazing. Um, it searches over 5,000 high quality peer reviewed journals, and they've got very strict inclusion criteria as to which journals um, are included and available to be part of PubMed. The emphasis is North American, um, and, uh, but it, there are key international journals as well. So sometimes if you're looking for a topic that's um, that's more relevant to uh, outside of North America, sometimes we'll use different sources or PubMed might not be, you know, the first place that we're going to, um, but it is our one of like, it is our topmost, topmost uh, database, particularly because it's free. And the subject coverage is also very wide. It's medicine, nursing, allied health, dentistry, veterinary, uh, healthcare system, all kinds of things. So it really is, um, it really is a tremendous resource that's provided by the National Library of Medicine. Okay, so like we've mentioned, there's a new version of PubMed. Uh, so we've got just a couple of bullets here and then we're gonna go into PubMed and we're gonna search. So just a few quick things to note is most of the features are exactly the same as in the old PubMed. Some things are just moved around a little bit. Some things look a little bit different, but they function the same way. Um, so as far as changes to PubMed go, it looks different, but for the most part, um, it's been an easy transition. 
out of the driver has been that it is more friendly to look at on your mobile device. Um, we we put send the er because it's you know it's still it's still a lot of information to be looking at on your mobile device. Um, and the biggest changes tend to be kind of invisible, so you won't necessarily leave the or see them. Um, there's been an increased emphasis on the best match for sorting results. Sometimes this is really helpful. Sometimes not. Um, and I put in quotes improved phrase searching. Uh, this, I think, is a little, it used to be really hard to search phrases in PubMed. So if you were looking for a specific phrase and you wanted to put it in quotations and only search that, sometimes PubMed did not like that. Um, it's being advertised that the new phrase searching is better or a lot improved. And a bit early to know whether that's true or not. Um, some better, some improvements on the truncation. That's when you would like put an asterisk at the end of a word so you could search uh, for color, colors, coloring, colorful. Uh, instead of typing out all those all those versions, you could just put color with a asterisk. And um, and search syntax is optional to make it more like Google, where you just put in some words and it understands what you want to do. We're still a little skeptical um, about that and are still encouraging search syntax. But uh, there are many, there's no right or wrong way per se to be. So this is uh, the new PubMed, and you can visit it at pubmed.gov. And I'm just going to close these and come over to, um, to here. And just give me a second while I zoom in to make this a bit more visible to you. Now, one thing um, that they've got going on here, this pink bar at the top is a temporary one. I'm going to do one more increase. Um, the pink bar at the top is all about COVID-19 um, and just and links to the Center for Disease Control and to um, the National Institute of Health. Uh, once things or hopefully when things calm down a bit, then we won't need that pink line at the top. Um, so that's a temporary thing. The other line here is this sort of yellow color and it says, welcome to the new PubMed. If you wanna go back to the old PubMed, you can visit there. Um, but like I say, the new PubMed has been a okay transition. So what we can do here is we're just gonna type in um, a search. And it's just like Google, you can type in stuff. So I'm gonna type in honey and wound care because I wanna to know today about can I use honey as a um, strategy for wound care. So I type that in, I clicked enter, and now here we are in the results. So I'll just take you through what the page looks like. Again, this pink and yellow banner at the top are kind of annoying, so I'm just gonna scroll down through them. So our search box now is at the top. So if I had spelled a word wrong or if I typed in something and I wanted to change my mind about what I wanted to be searching, I can come here and change that. And if I want to go, oh, you know what? I was gonna show you. I'm just gonna come back for a moment here. I'm gonna come back to this main page. Um, sorry, I forgot to scroll down. Again, I'm always so distracted by these banners at the top. So main search box is here. If you're an advanced searcher and you want to go to an advanced search page, you can just click on the advanced that's underneath the search box. Scrolling down further, um, there's also, if you want, PubMed has some great, I mean, our session here today is awesome, but I know that like in a week's time, you might be going, wait, I forgot how to do this, or I want to learn more. Um, you can click on the FAQs and user guide. There's really great videos on um, how to search. If you use clinical queries or the single citation matcher, they're available here under find. And going further over, if you wanted to look in the MeSH database, it's over here as well. So some easy um, to find links. Coming further down, these are some new things that are highlighted. And this is trending articles. Believe it or not, uh, the top ones here are all about COVID-19. And then there's also latest literature. I haven't had a chance to go into these in advance. Um, sometimes these, these are helpful, like particularly if you are a fan of the journal Blood or JAMA or The Lancet, 
you could just say, oh, hey, here is the most recent and current up-to-date things from there. Maybe this is of interest to you, maybe not. Um, but that's what the new homepage looks like. Okay, we'll come back to our honey wound care. Okay. So again, we've got our search box. And uh, again, if you wanted to switch to advanced, you can do that here. So we'll just look. The first thing to note is right here, it says 267 results. So that's how many results that I've got. And if I think, gosh, that's kind of a lot. I don't want to look through 267. I can scroll down a little bit and come over to the left hand. And there's a fancy diagram that says, this is when all the, uh, you can see some spikes of when the, there was literature published on this topic. So in 2008 and 2009, there's kind of a boom. And then again in 2012 and 2014. So you can just kind of see the trend of when that was. Um, if you're only interested in, so then all in this column are the filters that are available. So if you want to say, okay, I only want things that uh, I can access the free full text of, you can click this box and it would limit to free full text. Um, or you can search down and say, you know what? I only want to know about reviews or guidelines. You can limit by article type. You can also limit by publication date. So I'm going to, it didn't take my free full text there. I'll try this again. I'll say, you know what? I only want guidelines. Oh, okay. And it took me right to guidelines. So it didn't let me do more than one. So there's only one guideline. That's not very much. I am going to, oh gosh, and it won't let me see that result. Okay, that's interesting. Often then, oh, filters reply. Here we are, sorry about that. In this yellow, filters apply guideline. I'll say, I, I want less than 267 references, but I want more than one. So I'm gonna clear that. And I'm gonna say, you know what? Instead of limiting by article type, I'm going to limit to English. So I don't see any language uh, limit filters. So I'm gonna click on additional filters and it opens up some more. Here's language. I'm going to say find English because that's the language that I can uh, speak and read. I'm gonna click to show that. For some reason, they still haven't included this. So now that it's showing, um, I still have my 267 results. I haven't applied that English filter yet. Now I'm gonna click it and it's going to apply that filter. So now we've only reduced to 262. So that's the premise of these filters. And sometimes it's really helpful in narrowing the search. Sometimes not so much. Now to look at these results are 262 results. Um, here in blue is the title, and underneath are the authors, followed by the information about this publication. So there's the journal, that's wounds, and the date. Tells me the PubMed ID. All the articles in PubMed, or all the references in PubMed, have their own unique number. So sometimes if you wanted to do things really quickly and remember an article or send it to us, you can just send us the PubMed ID. You have to be careful. It's helpful to provide also some additional information just in case you um, missed a number along the way. But that's often a helpful thing to search. This first one here, Honey of Biologic Room Dressing, is a free article and it's a review article. And then I can look at part of the abstract. So um, coming back up to the top, I can also change my display options. So right now, over here on the right hand side, it says, sorted by best match. And then it says display options. So I'm gonna click on this. And right now it's giving me a summary. It's sorting by best match and it's showing me 10 per page. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna say, I wanna see the abstracts because I like to skim through them. And I'm going to click it again. And I'm going to say, I don't wanna sort by best match. I'm gonna sort by most recent. And I would like to see more than 10 a page. So I click it one more time and I'm gonna say 200. So that just changes my results. 
or, sorry, it, change, it doesn't change the results. It changes the display of my results. All right, so now same. Um, now you'll notice that the first result is different than the one we had last time, because last time we filtered by best match, now we filtered by most recent. So this is from March of 2020. Um, and it says the article is in English and Spanish, and I can just see a little bit more information. So now I can see the whole abstract and I can see a link to a full text. So it's up to you, depending on what you're doing, how you want these things displayed. What I'm gonna do now is come into, I'm gonna come into one of these. Um, okay, well, let's just, oh, that one. Okay, we'll come into this one. New tools in wound care to support evidence-based best practice. That sounds great. So I click on it and it takes me into the record on the And so again, it just gives me, I can see that whole abstract. I can see the keywords, but as I scroll down, um, now it has some similar articles. This is something new in the new PubMed um, to have them displayed right here. Uh, they used to be in the old PubMed, they were in a tiny box and you couldn't see lots of information. So this is a nice way to highlight them more. Um, and in some articles, they'll also include the articles that, um, that are included as citations. So this is a pretty new record. It doesn't have all of that information yet. Um, and you could also see similar articles. So I can look at this. And if I wanted to go to, if you look on the left-hand side, it says previous result four of 262. I could click on that arrow. Similarly, if I wanted to go to the next one, um, then there is that. Uh, and also if I wanted to, if ever it said that there was a free resource, I could click over here on the right-hand side to the full text. So I'm gonna click on this and it's gonna open a new tab for me and take me to the full text. Now, um, often PubMed will tell you about the free ones. Um, sometimes they you'll get. Uh, sometimes they will give you the link, and they won't tell you it's free. And it actually is free. So I tend to click through sometimes, even though it's not advertised as being free full text. Sometimes it is. This one, however, is going to charge me a lot of money to access this full text article. And as I mentioned earlier, don't ever pay that. You could just send us this, um, this site. You could just copy this whole little thing right here, do a copy or email, email it to minet at umanitoba.ca and we will send you the full text of that. Christine's gonna talk a little bit uh, more about ordering those articles. Um, I'll also say just one last thing before I turn it over to Christine. Over here on the right side, there are some additional features. This is Cite. So if you use a citation software like um, EndNote or Zotero, you can um, you can uh, use these features. You could sorry, you can come up here and go Send to, or you can click on the site and it'll give you how you give the citation. Um, and you can also share it if you wanted. Uh, and also, there's also page navigation, so you could quickly go, if you just said, this article seems good, I want to know other ones like it, then you can quickly click down to similar articles. So that's kind of an overview of just how PubMed is formatted and structured and laid out. It's very, for those of you familiar with the old PubMed, it's very, very similar. Um, Chris, uh, and I think I'll get ready to turn it over to Christine. I will pause in case there are any questions about those things. Christine? I have a question. Yes. <laughs> Just for fun. I know oh, it's going to oh happen. My. I know it's going to happen. when librarians uh, ask other librarians fun questions. So uh, you did your search for honey wound care and you got Ooh, 267. Yes. So what happens? Um, if you just were to say like honey and instead of wound care, just wounds or something like that. Great question. Yeah, because if I looked at it and was like 262, that doesn't seem like enough. So yeah, I'll just change my search here, do honey wounds, and I'll click hit, uh, enter, or I could have clicked on search. And now I've got over 1,000 results. 
So sometimes, yeah, if you're looking, um, if you've got a lot of results, you might just want to add in a few more words at the top to make it more narrow or more specific. Or if you put in too many words at the top and then you get a lot of um, results, you can just delete some of those and make it more broad. That's like the quick and dirty way to approach the PubMed search, which is similar to um, Google or other kinds of um, uh, databases or platforms that you're searching. Okay, Christine, over to you. We're just gonna take a moment as we switch presenters. Yes, I'm not seeing any questions, but by all means, if you've got them, um, please do ask. I'll let you just grab the present. I think you can grab it from your end. That's me, okay. Now, the question is, there we which, go. Which screen is it showing? Um, I can't tell. What screen do you see, Orby? <laughs> we just see your um, desktop. Oh, okay. Well, that that is not what I meant to do. Uh, yeah, so if you go to the sharing and drop that down, and then it says show screen, you can then select which one. Right. Thank you, Orby. I told you all it would be an adventure. <laughs> um, okay. I think that is the one. So. In theory, now, you should see slides. We sure do. Okay, excellent. Um, so yeah, so Orvi kind of gave you the lay of the land, um, pointed out th some things that are different, some things that are not. Um, and so I'm gonna take some time in the second half to talk more about um, less the quick and dirty, just throw in a couple words and see what happens and um, talk about the more thoughtful approach to doing a search. So. If you've attended one of our sessions before, you'll know that we've talked about um, kind of breaking things down into steps. So you can identify your concepts, you need to think of different ways that people describe those concepts, um, and then you know think about the best way to kind of combine those together to get what you want. Um, and we're, we're gonna talk about this um, in a bit more detail. So, oops, that didn't. Okay, here, here we go. Okay, so um, you might have heard us talk about things like Pico. Uh, maybe you've heard this um, in an other context as well. Basically, it's just a tool to help you kind of break down your your topic. Um, Pico is, is very popular in medicine. There's also other ones. So some of you um, in nursing might have heard of Spice. Um, and it's just kind of to get you to stop and think. So like, who who are we talking about? What's the population? Is there a particular setting? Um, are we looking at um, one thing or like something compared to another? Um, just kind of really make it clear in your mind what it is you're looking for. Okay, so we have an example, um, and or and Orvi had picked this one out. I think, previous uh, versions of PubMed searching about right. So um, is is turning up the heat more effective than cold? So, if you take our pico, we can say so our our population or our patients. Well, it's it's people who happen to have uh, a, bug, a bug bed infestation. Pardon me. The intervention is heat and is freezing, and the outcome is well, we kill them, we get rid of them all. Um, so, when you think about your topic. I, I always like to get like a, a table going um, and you can think of different, the same thing. So population, um, it, it's the people with the bed bugs, but we're just gonna talk about bed bugs, right? So um, there's kind of the common way to talk about bed bugs, but there's also like the scientific term as well. Um, likewise for our intervention, we're talking about heat. Um, they use dryers to, to, uh, to try and, and deal with infestations of bed bugs. Comparison, we talk about freezing, cold treatments, um, and then our outcomes is the eradication of the bed bugs themselves. So usually when we search, um, the, the whole uh, question is important, but we don't look so much at the outcome, right? So we, we say, yeah, okay, bed bugs, heat and freezing, but um, depending on, on what your topic is, you can kind of bias your search if you say, oh, I'm, I'm only looking for control, right? Because someone might not use the term control. Um, so it's, uh, 
it's a it's a bit of a um, an iterative process sometimes, but usually we focus on the population, the intervention, and the comparison. If if, if the comparison is important, otherwise, I mean, we might just say you know like oh bed bugs and heat does that work right? So it's been a while since we've had a poll. Um, poll number three, which I believe is the last one, is uh, what are Boolean operators? So I'm going to test you, and you can tell me what Boolean operators are. We'll just take a couple minutes. I'll have a sip of my water here while I wait. By the way, you can pick more than one option, I believe, in this one. I'll just give it a, a couple more seconds. Looks like not quite everybody's voted yet. Okay, so we'll We'll call this one done. And this one was actually a bit of a trick question because they are database commands that can narrow your results. They are database commands that can broaden your results. And they are also database commands that you use to combine search terms. Um, so we'll talk about that um, right now. Um, now, whether or not you, you've actually heard the term Boolean operators, you, you might have already heard um, uh, talk, people talk about ands and ors and things like that in, the in terms of searching, right? So I'm interested in heat or dryers, right? So um, or is used to link together similar concepts, right? Um, things that are not the same idea, but are part of the same question. So like the bed bugs and heat, right? So you would combine those together with an and, right? And, I, and I, I've used the example in the past about um, if you're ordering pizza. So um, I, 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 like, I like the meat pizzas, right? Um, so I'll take ham or I'll take pepperoni or I'll take salami. Any of these are good. So I would combine those with or. Um, but a requirement for me is pineapple. It has to have pineapple. So I would say any of these meats, you know, ham or pineapple or salami and pineapple, right? Because that is, uh, I know controversial, <laughs> but I think pizza without pineapple is not worth eating. A um, little bit of information about me. Now, you might have heard about knots also, and um, that is something that you can use to try and get rid of things. So if I if I was ordering my pizza and it's like I don't I do not on any circumstances want anchovies, I'd say not anchovies, right? Um, which is straightforward when you're ordering pizza. But if you're looking for articles, sometimes um, you can accidentally get rid of things that would be useful. So if, for example, you're looking at something about um, children, right? You're, you're interested in um, insulin pumps for children and whether they work and all that kind of stuff. So if you said, okay, in your search, not adult, if there was an, an article that talked about both children and adults, the fact that there's adults there would exclude that article. So we generally try to discourage people from using not um, just because it can be a little bit tricky. Okay, so your go-tos are or and and. So or is for things that are similar, that describe the same idea, and and is to combine different topics. Okay, is that, does that clear? Does everybody, anybody have questions about that? Anything to add, Orvi? I just think it's very telling that you must have pineapple on your pizza. <laughs> it is, I know. Okay, well, in that case, we'll 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 keep going here, um, if in the interest of time. So, if we were going to construct a search on our bed bug topic, um, here's here's our table, right? So we've got the bed bug table, or pardon me, column the the heat 
column and the cold column and the and the outcome column, right? I'm going to ignore the outcomes for now. Um, Orvi had mentioned uh, quotation marks for phrases, right? So um, when you do a search using a phrase, it's looking for the exact phrase, right? So you'll see on the screen here it says bed bug or bed bugs, right? Because computers are not smart. It does not know that those are the same thing, right? Um, my my kind of slogan is that the, the, the database looks for what you tell it to look for and not for what you want, right? So you have to be very deliberate about what you what you search for. So we could look for bed bug or bed bugs or bed bug as one word because that's that's an option too. Um, and in that case, we can use the asterisk and look for bed bugs as well. Okay. And then we've got our our technical term here. I'm going to say this so badly. Uh, Cymex le lecturalarius. Sure. Um, and you'll notice I put quotation, or not quotation marks, pardon me, brackets around all of those things because they're all the same idea. So you want to group them together. So um, there's another set of brackets with heat or dryer, right? And another set of brackets with freeze or cold because those are, are respectively similar ideas. And I've connected them all with and, right? So anything that the database shows me has to have one of the bed bug terms and one of the heat terms and one of the cold terms. Okay, so, um, oh, ha, ha, there you go. So I just uh, kind of described that to you already. Um, I don't believe we mentioned earlier, but we will be sending uh, slides um, after, the, after the session is over. So you can use these as, uh, as notes to look back on if you need to. Okay. And Christine, uh, we've had a question, which oh, is, sorry. Or and the and need to be capitalized. Ah, this is an excellent question. So um, I say because it's too hard to keep track of which databases need to be capitalized and which don't, because different databases are different. I say just capitalize them all the time um, because it's so. I, and I'm not sure. Maybe you know, Orvi, if PubMed is a capitalized versus a not capitalized. But if 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 you just aren't sure, just go for it. Um, I, well, I know for certain the old PubMed needed capitalization. Right. I am not certain nor confident the new PubMed. Um, so I also will be using capitals. Fair enough. Um, yeah, so I just do it all the time. Um, so I, I hope that that helps. Okay. All right, so I'm actually going to switch now uh, to the the fun live version. Um, so let's let's search for bed bugs. Okay, so I've got my my open bracket bed bug in quote. Oh, haha! I need to not. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. I will uncapitalize that. So sorry about that. So bed bug or bed bugs. Or bed bug. And Christine, or. maybe just while you're typing in that uh, comprehensive strategy, <laughs> yeah. to reiterate um, two things. One is that we intentionally did not include COVID-19 um, examples today. Uh, partly <laughs> to give everyone just a brain break from it. Um, and the other thing is, like Christine mentioned, uh, we will be following up with copies of our slides from today. The recording of today's session will also be available. We'll send out that information. And also we've got a handout which covers some of these um, concepts about creating effective search strategies. And it includes like the grids um, that Christine had demonstrated that, um, that we use to help us organize our concepts. So that will all be coming out by email after the session today. Thanks, Ravi. Okay, so you can see I've I've entered in my search terms. I've got all my like concepts together, um, and I've con oops, aha! I almost did it wrong. I uh, I've connected them with and right because it has to have one from each category, or I don't want it. Okay, so we click on search and. Okay, so 
I've got three whole results. That doesn't seem right. Let's see here. Do I have some kind of filters? Let's reset all the filters just in case. Makes no difference. Okay. Um, so bed bug or bed bugs or bed bug asterisks or I'm not even going to try. And heat or dryer and freeze or cold. Interesting. That doesn't seem right to me. Does that seem right to you, Orvi? It sure doesn't. And I'm simultaneously uh, doing a little double check here. Uh, it seems really weird. Maybe just whack off the end of one of those, like the freeze or cold. I mean, like take off the thing completely? Yeah. Let's try that. Okay. Delete that. Sorry, the more, <laughs> more comprehensive way to say that would be to delete that last segment. Right. So I'm up to 33. So that's better. Um, and we'll, we're just going to go with this for now. Um, all right. So we've got, like Orvi said, you know, we have our results. They're currently displayed as most, oh, they're displayed as the most recent. That's interesting. Uh, I didn't change that today. It, it sometimes remembers things you did before. So that's kind of exciting. Um, and if I like the looks of this one, I can click on it and have a look. Um, I want to point out a few things. Um, this one has some stuff that the, the record Orvi didn't, uh, Orvi looked at didn't. Um, so again, for the full text link, you can see like we've got that, uh, that free link here that Orvi was talking about. Um, this one is interesting in that it has pictures, right? So there's, there's figures. So if you want to know what a bed bug looks like, um, that's pretty great. Um, oh, this one has references as well. Um, but something I wanted to, to point out that um, is, is relevant, we're going to talk about um, shortly, is the MESH terms, right? So um, you might have heard about MESH. It stands for Medical Subject Headings. Um, different databases sometimes have their own set of subject headings, uh, but MESH is, is, I think, one of the more popular ones, uh, or at least more well-known, right? So the deal with subject headings is someone has gone through um, the articles that are that are listed in PubMed, and they said it's about this, 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 and this, and they apply tags, right? So we've got animals, we've got bed bugs. Uh, it's to do with microbiology. It's also to do with physiology, um, feeding behavior. It's uh, to do with the gastrointestinal tract, really, um, immunity, all kinds of stuff. So mating preferences for animals. Uh, what is this title anyway? I never really looked at this. Uh, female bed bugs. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, and so if you want to have um, kind of a, another strategy rather than just being like this or this or this or this, trying to think of all the different ways to say something, um, you can look up these tags because no matter what uh, language the author uses in their abstract and their title, um, it will get the tag that is appropriate. So um, if you're looking at stuff to do with cancer, as an example, um, people might talk about cancer, they might talk about neoplasms, they might talk about um, um, oncology, that's to do with cancer. Um, there are all kinds of different terms, but they're all about cancer, right? So um, if you just typed in cancer, well, you're going to get some stuff, but you're not going to get the stuff that uses the term neoplasm. So um, the beauty of the MeSH system is that regardless of whether the author says cancer or neoplasm, it gets the same tag, right? So it makes things a little more thorough in that respect. Um, the downside of MeSH is that people, for the most part, are actually doing this, so it takes time for it to happen. So sometimes you will see articles that don't have MeSH yet, right? So um, in that case, the uh, the keyword search where you're saying look for this word in the title of the abstract is really the only way you can go. Okay. Um, so yeah, so if you wanted to do a MeSH search, and just out of curiosity, I'm going to look to see where it, it was, was it heat and drying? I want to see where, I'm going to use the find function to see see where this is. Oh, oh, interesting. So Heat shows up in one of the author's names, Louise Heaton, um, also in one of the similar articles. Okay, so 
this is another thing to keep uh, so and dryer doesn't show up anywhere. All right, so this is another thing to keep in mind, right? Uh, like I said earlier, it looks for what you tell it to look for, not for what you want. So like this article is not really about what, what we were interested in using heat to kill off bed bugs, um, but it showed up because um, this particular author, uh, part of her last name is heat. Um, and yes, if I had not used the truncation, the little asterisk, this would not have shown up. Uh, in my mind, I was like, oh, I want heat. I want heaters, you know, things like that. Um, but this is one of those unintended consequences, right? So sometimes you just kind of have to take things as they come and, and uh, adjust on the fly, right? All right, and so. Christine, and Christine, too, um, just to add on to that and to tie it back in with what you were saying about the mesh subject headings, mm -hmm. it, using subject headings too helps prevent against that kind of thing um, because yeah some of your search terms sometimes end up in people's names or in the institutions where they work mm -hmm. such as you know if they work at the you know um, Manitoba Cancer Care uh, that would be included in in the search results whereas if you search just with mesh then um, it would not pull in those results exactly Okay, so how do you, how do you use mesh then? Like how do you how do you know what to do? Um, I'm going to go back to the main page, and um, really quickly, you can see underneath that giant blue box is we've got on the left sorry on the right is the mesh database. So you can look up what term you need. Okay, so I'll click on that real quick, um, and I'm going to say okay, uh, bed bugs. Oops. I, you need to spell things correctly too, by the way. Bed bugs. Now, Christine, I noticed that this version of PubMed looks different than the one you were just in. It sure does, Orvi. Um, so, yeah, they haven't transferred everything over yet. Um, so sometimes it will look shiny and new, um, and sometimes, like the, with the mesh database, it it looks just like the old mesh database, right? Um, don't know at what point they're going to switch that over. Um, we can just assume that they're going to, uh, you know, as they go along when they get the chance. Okay. Um, and, so. and for sure we know this is happening with the mesh database. Sometimes too, it seems every once in a while we get kicked out of the new one into the old one. Um, and I think it's just one of those transition type of things. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, a great takeaway from today is if you do notice, oh, I'm in the new one, now I'm in the old one, uh, not to panic. That's a little bit just part of the process. This is such a big monster of course that it's, um, they're continually working on it, um, and it'll just take some time to bring the whole of the uh, resources that are part of this package over to the new interface. Yes. Okay. So, um, just I, I'm just looking at the time here, so I'm going to try and 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 get things moving here so you can see bed bugs is a subject heading right um they, they have bed bugs as one word so that's that's interesting um and you can see kind of how their structure um in their their it's called a thesaurus in the, um works right so they are part of this group which is part of that group which is part of that group which is insecta which is an arthropod etc cetera, etc cetera. so um if there was some kind of like subtype of bed bugs that would be kind of like underneath here i'm not sure if you can see my cursor moving um but i could say okay well i said bed bugs but really i'm interested in all the uh hemipetras you know and i could switch if i wanted to um, but bed bugs is what I want. So uh, up on the corner here, it says add to search builder. And look, there it is, bed bugs, mesh. Um, so I can search that or I can start um, again with my next term. So I guess uh, heat, let's try heat, see what happens. Ah, so we've got hot temperature, we've got extreme heat. Um, and then a whole bunch of other things that have heat in their name. Um, so I'm going to click on hot temperature and just see the description for that. Um, so it says, okay, it's for uh, hot temperatures or heat, right? So temperature is another one. So uh, like I said, I could change my mind at this point. It's like, well, I'm interested in hot temperature. 
Technically, though, I'm also interested in cold. So I could just click on temperature and it's going to take me to the temperature one. And you can see all the more specific things underneath there. So cold temperature, freezing, hot temperature, etc. cetera. Um, and over in the top corner here, I can add it to my, my search as well. So um, it says add to search builder and, and the default is and, right? So whatever comes back has to do with bed bugs and temperature. So away we go. Okay. so. It's structured the way we talked about, and I'm going to click on Search PubMed. Ah, look at that. So it is the old look to PubMed, um, but you can see we've got 27 things, right? Um, and it's currently sorted by publication date. We've got 20 per page, and it's the summary. All right. So again, we can click through and, and check out the, the abstract, see if we really want something. And it's also got the little notes saying that it is uh, a free article where it is in uh, PubMed Central. Okay, so I'm just going to flip back really quickly to my slides just because I want to make sure I am hitting all the highlights here. Okay, so we talked about um, the fact that um, subject headings kind of encompass a concept rather they're not just words that you're looking for. So that's good. But again, um, not all of them are available on all the articles right away. Um, and also, I, I don't think I mentioned earlier, not every idea has a, a mesh term. So like if you're, if you're interested in return on investment uh, for a particular um, type of treatment or, or program, that kind of thing, there is no return, or, or at least last time I looked, there was no return on investment mesh heading. So in that case, you do have to just look for um, the terms that the authors would use um, in their article. So like return on an investment or cost benefit analysis, things like that. Okay, oh, we did this part. Ah, requesting the articles. So this, this is, I think, um, the most new and exciting thing um, that we're talking about in our, our session today. We haven't really talked about this aspect before, um, but if you are going through your search results and you're like, oh, I like number one, I like number three, I like number five. Um, you can check them off. Um, you can also, when you're in the um, individual article records, you can do something similar as well. Um, and you can say, okay, now I want to kind of um, make a list, right? So kind of on the not quite far right, we've got send to, and we have a few options. And the one that we're interested in right now is clipboard. Right, so it says add three items. Yes, please add them to my clipboard. Um, and so on the side, it's like clipboard. There's three things. So I'm going to click on it, and there they are. So I'm I'm able to go do some more searches and like, well, I'm going to try these terms now, um, see what that gets me, and then I can continue to add things to my clipboard um, so that I have a list of the things that I want. Right, um, and this gets to the part of of request. Like Orvi said, you can sometimes click on those links, um, but if it's not available, you can send us an email and we'll get hold of them for you. So once you're done. Christine, I will just note you are in still in the old version. You might yes. want to flip over into the, into, the new. into the new one. That's a good point. Okay, um, let's see. How am I going to do this? So, okay, I'm just going to use my back. Okay, we'll pretend. One, two, three. These ones are just the best. So we're going to send to clipboard. So it's very similar. Um, and it says three things have been added. Um, and you'll notice I can either click on my link to the clipboard here or just underneath my search box, there's a link for clipboard. So um, we'll just pretend that I've kept searching and I've kept adding things and I've got like a whole pile of stuff I want. So if I go to clipboard, it's um, like before it lists them all out, right? So you can take things out from clipboard if you change your mind. Um, oh, it's, how do you like that? Uh, all the things I've I've selected are free, so I wouldn't actually have to send them to mine, but um, I'm going to pretend to do it anyway. Um, so you're in clipboard. You'll notice it says it expires after eight hours. So if you go for lunch, it should all still be there when you get back. So don't worry about that. 
Um, if you want to send us a, a list of things, you click on email, right? And then you would put in here, you'd put the MyNet address. So MyNet at UManitoba, and it helps if you spell it right. Okay, dot .ca. Um, and then you need to give it a subject. So artic article request, article request. And then um, we, we really want to make sure that you get what you need. So you, you, you need to tell us who you are. What's your name? So Christine Nielsen, oops. And then we've got an option to send a message. So I'd say, hi, please send me these. Thanks, um, Christine. Oh, and also, um, if you already have a card, we can look up your email, but it is probably best if you give it to us uh, in the message as well. Send me these to Christine Nielsen. And I know I'm not spelling it right, but that's okay. Manitoba.ca. Okay. Okay, so I want to send them all, so that's good. Um, otherwise, I could pick and choose. Um, it doesn't really matter what format you send, so you can send it as a summary. It's that's fine. Um, confirm you are indeed a real live person and not a robot, and then you would send it. Um, and then over in the MyNet email, uh, a message will come up um, saying that it's from PubMed. Um, the subject would be article request, Christine Nielsen. Um, our, our fabulous library assistant Cheryl will open it up and see that it says, hi, please send me these. And then underneath that would be the list of articles that I want. Okay. I'm just going to cancel that so that she's not getting stuff that she doesn't need to get. Um, any, any questions about that? I can also just add one quick thing, Christine, which is that uh, you don't have to just undermine it if you wanted to have a record of um you know the articles that you had found then uh you could email those records to yourself as well so if you were doing some research or if you'd found some that you want to come back to um uh and then you can just email them to yourself also if you were a little bit worried about those very valuable results that you wanted being sent off into the ether uh, and you could always send to MyNet and then send to yourself as well. Very true, yeah. So um, there, there are more uses than just sending it to us, for sure, but um, the thought is that this will just make things a little easier, one less step for you to try and um, copy and paste and do all that stuff. So um, yeah, the, uh, the clipboard also, you uh, for email, you can, uh, oh, Sorry, you can you can send things to um, citation managers as well. Sorry, so rather than sending email, like Orvi said, if you use something like EndNote Reference Manager, you can send things to your citation manager too. So that's kind of handy. Um, okay, sorry about the the phone there. Um, all right, so just one last last bit of emphasis the. The email thing is great, but you have to tell us uh, where we're sending the articles. Otherwise, um, we won't actually get them and then disappointed. <laughs> we don't want to disappoint anybody. Okay, so uh, just really quick, we're, we're almost done. Uh, quick plug for our next session, which is a PubMed, new PubMed part two. Okay, so we're not going to talk so much about, okay, you know, this is how you search for things, but talk about things like um, built-in filters, um, we talked a little bit about that, but there are some additional uh, things to cover there as well. Uh, tools like the Single Citation Manager um, and uh, my NCBI accounts in general. Okay, so um, that is about it for us today. Um, did you have anything you wanted to add, Orvi? I think uh, just the everybody's got the opportunity now to enter any questions in the chat. Uh, you're always welcome to follow up with us afterwards if you have questions. Mm -hmm. and we always post the recordings of our most recent sessions on mynet.ca. So if you like today's sessions, you want to know more about building comprehensive search strategies, or you want to know about predatory publishing, or any of the um, really cool, awesome information things that uh, we, we talk about, uh, those are all posted on Mynet. 
And like we've mentioned, we will be following up with the link to the recording for today, as well as um, some handouts that you might find to be helpful. All right. Well, it looks like some people are, are done for the day. So thanks for coming. Um, we'll just kind of hang around for a little bit in case there are some questions. We just want to thank you with a we uh, hope that you're a little bit more comfortable searching PubMed and that you're a little bit familiar now with the new features and look of the new PubMed. So thank you so much. Okay. If anybody does have um, any questions, uh, then you can just let us know. Thanks for the shout out, Grace. Great that um, it was nice to attend by two of her most favorite librarians. Aw, how sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to shut us down. Thanks for coming, everybody. Bye.